Okay, so I decided to do a quick video, well, quick video series on optimization of assets from the Unreal Marketplace. So featured here we have the Decay Pack from Meshing Gun, which is a really, really great looking pack. Um, I mean, the textures on it look really well done. Uh, there's a lot of great things about it, like when you look at the shader complexity, for example, everything's all green and pretty, which is awesome. So there's lots of things that I do like about it. <clears throat> the things I don't like about it, uh, I suppose, would be to do with my own particular project, not necessarily the product itself. Um, also, to be clear, I bought this yesterday myself. I, there's no sponsorship or anything like that. I just like this pack and a lot of their product, actually. It's pretty pretty good. Um, but the triangles, this is, this is crazy for anyone who's not using Nanite. And I'm not using Nanite, and I'll explain why. But a lot of it boils down to things like the caveats of Nanite currently not being able to do runtime vertex painting and different things like that. Um, I kind of want to be able to do that. So, so I want to be able to optimize these assets or at least change them over to what I'm doing, right? And the level of detail on some things like this would normally just kill you because they're, <laughs> they're ridiculous. But I'll kind of show you how to make them usable and hopefully get as much use out of them as you can. Um, cause I don't think that without some, um, outside editor stuff that you're going to get the ideal results you want for everything. But for a lot of things, this, this workflow will work. So here I'm going to go to, um, my environmental stuff and we have different props. For this first video, I'm going to do a super simple one, and we're just going to do this concrete barrier. So this concrete barrier has 40,000 triangles, 1260 fallback, and I'm going to point out this here in a minute. So we're going to start by exporting this, or migrating it rather, to my optimization playground project. And um, this will be included at the bottom of the description. And just minimize this for now. Um, so this will be included at the bottom of the description because it's just going to be a pretty basic project that apparently doesn't want to open right now. I'll just reopen it. Not you. So anyway, this will be included at the bottom uh, description. It's just got some really simple stuff in it like procedural mesh generator and I'll go over this here in a bit um, but for the most part it's just used for optimizing assets and then exporting them to your main project so you have a concrete barrier here and like I said 40,000 nanite triangles 1260 fallback so the thing is when you look at the wireframe it's like that is a lot of triangles for a for a brick um, so if you in it, de nah, disable nanite support, then your triangles is 40 K, which is a lot. Um, but if you remember, we had 1260 as our fallback. So if we look down at our reduction settings, you can actually set a max. And I am going to point out again, right here, oh, camera speed, that right there in specific, you're going to see it pinch afterward, but the general shape of everything and all the, the level of detail that's here. We're going to reduce this to 1260 and apply changes. And you can see there was <laughs> next to no change, except for the little tiny pinch that happens there. So how close are people ever going to be to this asset in your game is going to be a lot of the topic of this whole optimization thing, because the, the chances of somebody coming in here and noticing some really, really granular thing, like the polygons are a little chunky on this piece is really, really unlikely. Whereas 40,000 triangles versus 1260 makes a huge difference when you look at the wireframe. Um, and I'm not sure if this matters or not, but during, during chaos fracturing, it seems to make a difference in geometry com complex or, uh, complexity which would make a difference even when it comes to rendering and stuff like that. So um, I'm using chaos, which is the kind of the point of this. So if I do this, now I can drag this into the scene and I'm going to go to fracturing mode and just really quickly 
make a new new collection here. Uh, select all uniform. You can zoom in. You can see I'm basically just doing a basic geometry collection fracture just to show you. Um, so we do that. Change that back to normal. I'm gonna, it should be simulating physics now. So I'm gonna lift it way up in the air and hopefully we can get it to break just by dropping it on its corner or something like that. There we go. So that fractures and everything like that. And then again, you can check that the geometry isn't too insane. It gets a lot more crazy with chaos, obviously. But in general, it should be better, I think. So that's the first optimization. Um, it really just drops your poly count and makes it so you can use those assets a little bit better for some stuff. Uh, you could probably use Nanite, uh, or you can use Nanite with Chaos, but you can't use Runtime Vertex Painting. Um, so that's a whole other topic of what you can get into with that, because that tool is crazy. And like you can make things wet and have fire propagation and mud and blood and whatever you want as long as you kind of stay within the confines of it so it's a really really good tool i suggest you guys look into that one as well um in the next video i'm going to go over some of the other tools that i've been using like the skeletal mesh editor uh, a morph tools morph power tools plugin um and in the immediate next video i'm going to go over changing these textures because one thing we're going to note here this prop is 98.8 mega megabytes worth of memory because of a lot of the texture size, like huge texture size, textures that do not need to be this large. Uh, and I'll explain and show how and why I know that. So uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next part of the series and I hope this helped you guys.